Hi, it's Maya here. I decided to try to read a manga a day in February, so 28 mangas in 28 days. I got this idea from Cecilia Reeves, who read one manga or graphic novel a day last July, and it looked like a lot of fun. I will leave a link to both their channel and that specific video in the description. If you follow my Goodreads, you've probably seen this going around and wondered why I am reading so much manga, so here you go. Most of the manga that I'm going to read is from the library, then I have a few, like six or so, borrowed from Reya from the Bookfinch, and the rest uh, is manga I own, either digitally or physically. So, let's get started. It's the 1st of February, it is already like 10pm, I have just showered, and now I can finally start this challenge, and I've been putting off reading Delicious in Dungeon Volume 9, just uh, waiting for February to start so I can start this. This is the most recent uh, volume in my favorite, current favorite manga series, and it came out on January 19th. I immediately bought it, but ever since then I have been putting it off for this challenge, so I can finally start it. I'm very excited. It's a, a comedic, comedic high fantasy cooking manga where people are cooking monsters. They're monsters and then they're eating them and there's like fake recipes in the book but it also has like very interesting lore and world and the art is one of my favorites for a while and it's also super funny so I'm gonna read this today I'm on my way to the library to pick up a reservation it's not actually cold enough to warrant this coat but it's snowing and I didn't want my hair to get wet so I wanted the coat with a hood but I did finish Delicious in Dungeon Volume 9 last night and I gave it 4.5 stars. I did like it, but not as much as Volume 8, which I gave 5 stars. It had a lot of great dungeon lore and we learned a bit more about Izutsumi and it was fun. I loved it. It was great. So today I think I will be picking up Dorohedoro Volume 1. I watched the anime on Netflix and... I will tell you a bit more about what's that about when I get back home, but now I'm gonna pick up a reservation, a hold. It's not a manga, but it's something that the library ordered in like September and it finally arrived, the new book. So I go and pick that one up. I think I'm the first person to get it because I think I asked them to, <laughs> to order it. It's been so long that I can't remember. But anyway, I'm gonna go to the library now. It seems I could have come with skis. So I'd quickly show you the book that I went to get. This is Burning Roses by Sel Huang. It brings together two like legends of fairy tales, Red Riding Hood and Hu Yi the Archer. And this is a novella that I've been looking forward to for a while. Now I'm gonna start reading, like I said, Dorohedoro Volume 1 by Q Hayashida. And this one is about this city that is only called The Hole. And there is a like this realm of sorcerers who come to the hole to make people's life dif lives difficult, like do experiments on them. The main character, Kaiman, is a man with a Kaiman head. Here's what the art looks like. It's very different from the like clean art style of A Delicious in Dungeon. This has a lot more like gritty lines. And the other main character is Nikaido, who is like a restaurant owner who is helping Kaiman maybe find the sorcerer who did this to him. It's now day four. I didn't feel like filming a clip yesterday. On day two, I did finish Dorohedoro and it was fun. It was violent and I gave it three stars because it takes a little while for me to get into the plot and characters. Even though I've seen the anime, it took me a while to get into that as well. So the, th uh, so the first volume wasn't like the greatest yet, but I still really enjoyed it. And I did like that Kaiman's um, character design was a bit different than in the anime. It was a little bit, little bit more sleek and like slim and that gave it a bit more of a punk and punk aesthetic, I think. As you can maybe see from this page, his face is a bit narrower than in the anime. On day three I went with a horror manga. This is the first volume of PTSD Radio that I picked up from a humble bundle of horror manga. I basically just wanted to check this one out because I like the art style. And I gave three stars. It was these short snippets of horror stories that sort of had a carrying element and had something in common. But it's not quite clear yet what that thing in common is. So I'm excited to read more of the volumes. I think I got all of them 
in the Humble Bundle. And today I think I will read The Girl from the Other Side, Volume 9 by Nagabe. This is a dark fairy tale sort of fantasy manga and I want to read this but I will also have to reread Volume 8 before doing that. So this is about this monster who takes the care of this little girl and then there's also a lot of like world politics like the city of people who for some reason want to go and there's this curse that turns people into monsters and this is my current favorite series of the delicious in dungeon and i always reread the previous volume before i pick up the next one but I'm not sure yet how I will count or if I will count the rereads for this challenge. So it's now day eight, so start of the second week. I thought I'd do a proper update um, because I haven't updated you in a while. So on day four, I did finish both rereading The Girl from the Other Side, Volume 8, and reading for the first time The Girl from the Other Side, Volume 9 by Nagabe. And the reread stayed at four stars, and the new one I gave three stars because this is mostly focused on the insiders, so the humans and their politics, and they're just not as interesting as the main characters, but I'm really looking forward to the next volume based on how this ended. I really want to know what happens next. I think it comes out in April. And then my sister linked me to draw the drawing One Piece characters in different styles, and that made me want to read One Piece. So I have from the library a few volumes. Uh, on day 5 I read One Piece volume 78 and on day um, 6 I read One Piece volume 79 and I haven't read One Piece in a while. I, like I read a previous volume in the summer and before that I had like a year or two long pause and I was in the middle of the Dressrosa arc so these are the finishing volumes of the fight against Do Flamingo, and I couldn't remember a lot about it so I only gave um, this volume 3 stars and the next one like 2.5 stars, but it's been a while so I didn't really have a, a connection to what was going on. I had forgotten a lot. Uh, if you don't know, One Piece is like a pirate adventure manga and it's very classic action shown and in the way that it's about the characters getting stronger and fighting bigger and bigger bosses in multi-volume fights. But there's also like great character moments and I like a lot of the humor so that keeps me interested in reading more of it. I have one more volume out of the library, but I don't know if I'm going to start that during this project because it starts a whole new arc, maybe at the end of the project, I don't know. Then on day seven, I picked up something more serious and I picked up my solo exchange diary by Nagata Gapi. And this is from the creator of my lesbian experience with loneliness, which I really liked. These are like essays about the manga's life and her anxiety and loneliness, and they're quite heavy and it's a bit rough to read like in one day. I can see it working better if I had read it with longer breaks, like I think it was published monthly and that might be like a good way to read it or at least have a, some sort of pause between reading the issues because it's a lot. I didn't like this nearly as much as um, her previous work. I have the second volume of this. I think it's a two volume thing from the library, so I guess I'll finish this during this project sometime later but I don't know what rating to give this yet. So to recap, during the first week I read Delicious in Dungeon Volume 9 by Ryoko Kui, Doro Hedoro Volume 1 by Q Hayashida, PTSD Radio Volume 1 by Masaki Nakayama, The Girl from the Other Side Volume 8 and 9 by Nagabe, Volume 78 and 79 of One Piece by Eiichiro Oda, and My Solo Exchange Diary Volume 1 by Nagata Gabi. So for today I decided I wanted something lighter and I picked up The Way of the House Husband Volume 2 by Kosuke Ono. This is like a one-joke comedy manga and the one joke is that this former Yakuza is a house husband now and the joke comes from him doing everyday stuff while looking scary and also some of them comes from when he meets people from his past and how he deals with those encounters in a sort of unexpected way. I hadn't thought about picking up the second volume because I read the first one and I thought it was fine, but I sort of got the joke from that. But uh, when I decided to do this project, I decided to pick this one up because one more day, one more a lighter read. So now that the second week starts, I think I will have to focus on trying to read the manga volumes earlier in the day because I most often read in the evenings and I have thought that of course I can like read one manga volume a day and also make progress in my books but when I keep pushing reading the manga to the evening then I only spend like my reading hour or two hours reading the manga and not read my books at all so 
Um, during this second week, I will try to read my mangas earlier. I haven't updated in a couple of days. It's now day 13, so it's Saturday. And I did this on purpose because I was reading the same series. So I was reading after I finished The Way of the House Husband, which I don't have a lot to say about, but I didn't already say it's the same joke. It was fun. I gave it three stars because I laughed out loud once. And then I focused on PTSD Radio uh, by Masaki Nakayama. I read volumes two to five. So I was only planning to read volume two, but um, then I realized that I got more con a lot more context for the little short snippet horror stories that were in uh, volume one when I read volume two. And I thought maybe I will get more of the links if I read these in one go. So I read volumes two to five. I'm not sure if that was the correct way, because a lot of them are like relying on the same sort of scary face, scary reveal, a very short horror story types. But I guess I got some links. I gave volume 2 3.5 stars because I got a lot of links and context for the first volume. But then volume 3, three I only gave 2.5 stars because I don't think it... I didn't like it as much. And then volume four was three stars. There was there was one like story set in more of the history of this one town where this is set, which gave a bit more context again. And then volume five, I'm not sure, yet sure what I will give it. I thought this series was complete, so that was part of the reason why I started reading it in one go. I know that there's volume six that has come out, and I thought it was all wrapped up, but I don't have volume six and the series is still ongoing. So now that I have read like these sort of personal essays in my solo exchange diary, I have read some uh, comedy manga, little short snippets, and then some short horror stories. I really want to read something with more, uh, more of a bigger plot. So I think this weekend I am going to read volumes one and two of Blue Exorcist by Kazue Kato. So this is volume one and this is volume two. I borrowed these from Reya from the book Finch. So this is a, one of their favorite series and I have no idea what this is about except that it's like I think contemporary fantasy. It's now day 16. It's Tuesday of the third week of the project and I thought I'd do an update again. I did finish Blue Exorcist volume one on Saturday Mm, and I liked it, but uh, once again, it didn't really get started yet. So there were things that I didn't like and things that I enjoyed and I wasn't hooked yet. But I do have the second volume as well, which I didn't get to on Sunday. So Sunday was actually the first day that I failed to read a manga. So now I'm one manga behind. But just to recap, uh, during the second week, I managed to read uh, The Way of the House Husband by Kosuke Ono, which I gave three stars. PTSD Radio Volumes 2, 3, 4 and 5, which I gave 2.5 or 3.5 stars, so somewhere in there. And then on Saturday, I finally read Blue Exorcist Volume 1, which I think I'll give three stars. So as I'm filming this, I'm still one manga behind. On Monday, I read Flying Witch Volume 1 by Chihiro Ishizuka. And this is like a slice of life, quite quiet manga about this girl who is uh, starting out as a witch and lives with her relatives who aren't witches. One weird thing about this is that I didn't like the font. You can't really see it, but I don't like the typeface, which isn't like a big thing, but it was a bit annoying to read. Like it's very clear, but I just, I don't like it. I'm not sure yet if I will continue. I might. So here we are. I haven't read today's manga and I am one manga behind. Okay, so it's Friday day 19 and it's 11 p.m. and I still haven't read my manga for today, but I thought I'd do an update on day 16. Um, I read one Piece volume 80. So this started a new One Piece arc and I had a lot of fun with this. The past two volumes were a lot of fighting because it was the end of that arc and the final boss of that arc. But this one had uh, the humor and the fun of One Piece when the characters could spend more time together and talk more. I really like the humor when they talk and the sense of companionship that they have and the world building of a new place is always fun. So I gave that four stars. Then I read something completely different. 
Um, I got Sugar Sugar Rune, like this is a really old uh, copy from the library, Sugar Sugar Rune Volume 1 by Moyoko Anno, and this is a sort of like fantasy comic about witches, two witches who go, come to our world from a magical world. They have to gather hearts from people to become um, the queen. One of them will become the queen, the one who collects the most hearts. And there's also this guy who's like uh, the villain or against them. And I really like the first volume. And the next day I read the second volume. Uh, the names of the characters are like Chocolat and Vanilla. So that's sort of the naming convention for a lot of the characters. But I gave the first volume four stars. For some reason I found it really charming. I was quite um, surprised. It was quite an unexpected. The second one I gave three stars. It's only, I think, an eight volume uh, series. And my library has all the volumes. So I think I will finish it. There was actually a reason why I picked this one up. Because I heard something about it but i will not say it here because it's a spoiler maybe i will put it in my goodreads review and link it down below or something and like i said i haven't read my manga for today i might pick up dragon head volume one which is another horror manga that i got from the same uh, horror manga bundle that i got ptsd radio in so that's how i've been doing and i hope i get to finish that manga quite soon i've just been watching netflix instead hi i'm back and it's a bit after midnight now, and I just finished Dragonhead Volume 1 by Minetaro Mochizugi. Mochizugi. As I said, it's a horror manga, and it's about this train full of school kids that's returning from a school trip, but the train crashes in a tunnel, and there are a couple of kids only left alive who are trapped in the tunnel, and something's going on in the world outside that we don't yet know anything about. I found it okay i would definitely give it another volume because i got i think the five first volumes in that horror manga bundle so i'll read at least one more because we didn't really find i out a lot in this uh, first volume yet except that there are like these three main characters uh, trapped in this tunnel it was just them sort of getting to grips with their situation so i want to know more the art style it wasn't one of my favorites. I wasn't a big fan of it, but you know, it was readable. So that's one of the reasons why I wasn't completely enamored with it either. But I will continue on maybe during this vlog. It's now Tuesday, day 23, so the final week is ongoing. The last time I updated you, it was Friday, day 19. And on Saturday, I didn't feel like reading manga. And then in the evening, when I usually would have crammed in a manga if I hadn't yet, I instead watched Finland choose our Eurovision Song Contest candidate or participant. And I don't usually watch that because I don't care who we send to um, the Eurovision Song Contest. I just like to watch the contest itself when it happens and the other countries. But since it was cancelled last year, the whole Eurovision, I was clearly suffering some, from some sort of Eurovision shortage, so I watched that and didn't read a manga. So that means that on Sunday, day 21, I was two mangas behind this challenge. And I plan to read three mangas that day and not be behind anymore. And I plan to read A Pride Story by Kaoru Mori, uh, volume 5, Blue Exorcist, volume 2 by Kazuo Ekato, and Hakumei and Mikochi, volume 2 by Takuto Kashiki. And I did finish two of these. I finished Bright Story Volume 5 by Kaoru Mori. And this is a historical manga about life on the 19th century Silk Road. The art is really beautiful and detailed, uh, depicting the customs and the clothes of the culture. And I gave this one four stars. This one had a wedding. It has like these events and it follows a couple of different characters. I don't know what the English title is, a bride story when there are uh, multiple brides that we follow. So I gave that one four stars and then I finished Blue Exorcist Volume 2 by um, Kasue Kato and this one I liked better than the first one. So I think I never said what this is about. This is about Rin Okumura who has been raised by a human priest but finds out he is the son of Satan and he enters this magic academy in order to become an exorcist to defeat Satan, of course. This volume 2 I found a, a lot more interesting because this uh, introduced a lot more characters, the world 
uh, felt weaker than just Rin and his brother. One element that I did like about the first one was that Rin has a, a twin brother who is human, who stays around. So I found that appealing that there's like a sibling relationship. But this one, Volume 2, has so many more characters and so much more information about different types of exorcists and their magic that I found a lot more interesting. I I think I said that I gave the first volume three stars, but I think it would be more like 2.5 and then this one would be more like 3.5 stars. I did start the third one, Hakumei and Mikochi Volume 2 by Takuto Kashiki. Instead of finishing this, I instead watched Creature from the Black Lagoon, which I hadn't seen before. And I watched uh, To All the Boys Always and Forever on Netflix because I noticed that Cindy from With Cindy had posted a reaction video for that movie and I wanted to watch that reaction video, so I watched the movie first. So to recap week three, I read Flying Witch Volume 1 by Chihiro Ishizuka and this one I gave three stars. One Piece Volume 80 by Eiichiro Oda, which I gave four stars. Sugar Sugar Rune Volume 1 by Moyoko Anno, which I gave four stars. And volume 2 which i gave uh, three stars then i read dragon head volume 1 by minetaro mochizuki which i gave two stars i read bright story volume 5 by kaoru mori which i gave four stars and blue exorcist volume 2 by kasue kato which i gave 3.5 stars so that was week three so now we move on to week four yesterday so on monday i was still one manga behind and the plan was to finish hakume and mikochi volume 2 but instead i just made some progress in this and then i finished dragon head volume 2 and dragon head volume 3 by minetaro mochizuki I hadn't been planning on continuing on this, uh, continuing the series during this challenge, but for some reason I found it on Monday easier to veg out on my tablet instead of picking up a physical manga for some reason. So I read volume 2, uh, which I gave one star. I didn't like it. It was still focused on the three teens who were still stuck in that same tunnel when the, where the uh, train had crashed and the tunnel is starting to collapse. And I found the art not to be very clear, like there were some points where I wasn't sure if I was looking at water, steam or fire, so I couldn't react properly to what was happening. Also, I didn't find the girl character that well written. Also, there's a sexual assault in this volume, so wasn't into it. And then I read volume 2, it was a bit better because we found out a bit of what happened to the outside world. I gave this one two stars, it was a lot more interesting to see more of the world but it's quite clear that this series isn't for me. So today I plan on finishing Hakume and Mikochi Volume 2. I am a bit over halfway through. This is a cozy manga about these two little creatures who live in a forest and it has some short like one or two chapter adventures for them. I love the way that nature and animals, as you can see a nature view here, are drawn in this series, but I don't really care about the stories that much, so the art appeals to me more than the stories. So now that I have six days left in this challenge, I thought I'd show you what I have left to read. Hakume and Mikochi would be one, so I have five more that I need to read. I borrowed from Reya the whole Our Dreams at Dusk series by Yuki Kamatani. And this is a contemporary manga series that focuses on LGBT characters, and it is complete at four volumes. And I have read volume one before and I really loved it and I want to finish the series with the last three volumes. So I will reread this, which won't count, and then I will read these three. And then I have volumes six and seven of A Bride's Story by Kaoru Mori. I have the second volume of my solo exchange diary, but to be fair, I'm not really feeling this at the moment. And then I have Abara by Tsutomu Nihei. This is the complete deluxe edition. I wanted to try out this manga and I wanted to try out um, his series Blame, but the line at the library is too long, so I got Abara instead. And this is actually two volumes in one, but I think I would count it as one. And it's a complete story and it says to be like this sci-fi dystopian thriller. This was a long update, but that's all for now. On day 24, I finished Abara by Tsutomu Nihei. This was the science fiction dystopian thingy and it was very stylish it had these monsters who began appearing in the city and then these human created monsters who fight against them and i gave this one four stars and it's mainly because of the visuals and we weren't explained much but we still got this feeling of this big world and i really enjoyed the atmosphere my favorite character was this skull-faced person who wasn't in it much but i still love them. I don't remember if I mentioned it, but on uh, the previous day I finished Hakume and Mikochi Volume 2 
uh, by Takuto Kashiki and I don't have much to say about th th this that I didn't already say. It was a 3, maybe a 2.5 stars. The animal drawings are really beautiful. And I am currently reading the final volume of Our Dreams at Dusk by Yuki Kamatani. I have really enjoyed this series and I'm about halfway through, so I'm looking forward to finishing this. And then I have one more manga left to go. Alright, it's time to go through what I read during the final days and wrap up the week and the project. So I read the whole Our Dreams at Dusk series by Yuki Kamatani and this is volumes 1 to 4. I gave the first volume and the last volume 5 stars and the middle volumes 4 stars. This is such a gorgeous series. I mean the art is great but also like the character beats are on point and you really feel for everyone and the panel storytelling is great and it covers so many important topics. So this is a contemporary manga series about this group of LGBTQIA plus people who operate this non-profit where they fix houses and also hung, hang around at this one drop-in center. And the main character is high schooler Tasuku, who is here on the cover of the first volume. And he's gay and is having a hard time in school. And in the first volume, he finds this, uh, this drop-in center. There's also trans, lesbian, asexual and aromantic and questioning characters in this. So a description online says that this is a realistic heartfelt depiction of LGBTQ plus characters from different backgrounds finding their place in the world and about gender, sexuality and self-discovery and that's definitely what it is. And it also covers topics like the harm you can do when you think you're helping but you're actually pushing too hard or when you think you understand when you don't. And the main character is not exempt. He, he makes mistakes and is called out. I can't give it justice with this short description, but I'm just going to say that I recommend it and also give a content warning for lots of slurs and homophobia. And the final one manga that I finished for this project was A Bright Story Volume 6 by Kaoru Mori. Now, this volume was a lot more plot focused than the previous volume. Um, the main conflict is about one tribe attacking another. And I like the volumes depicting every everyday life with smaller stories better. I gave this one three stars. So during week four I read Dragonhead Volume 2 by Minetaro Mochizuki, which I gave one star, and Volume 3, which I gave two stars. I read Hakume and Mikochi Tiny Little Life in the Woods Volume 2 by Takuto Kashiki, and I gave this one three stars. I read Abara, the Complete Deluxe Edition by Tsutomu Nihei, and I gave this one four stars. I read Our Dreams at Dusk, Shimanami Tasugare by Yuki Kamatani Volume 1, which I gave five stars. Volume 2, which I gave four stars. Volume 3, which I also gave four stars. And Volume 5, which got five stars. And I finished with A Bright Story Volume 6 by Kaoru Mori, which got three stars. So that is the end of the project. I read 28 manga in 28 days. If you count the rereads, I actually read 30 manga in 28 days. There were only two days I didn't read manga at all, but I caught up later, as you saw. And I read 5,884 pages of manga in February. I didn't really manage to shift my manga reading to earlier in the day, which I said that I would do after the first week, but I did manage to finish two books, one short story and one short story magazine. But I didn't finish this book that I started at the end of January, so I have now officially been reading this one big book um, for over a month. But my favorites, my favorites were Delicious in Dungeon Volume 9 by Ryoko Kui and the Our Dreams at Dusk series by Yugi Kamatani. From the new to me series that I tried during this project, I will be continuing Sugar Sugar Rune by Moyoko Anno, as well as Doro Hedoro by Q Hayashida, and I'll probably continue PD PTSD Radio by Masaki Nakayama if the future volumes will be on sale sometime. Actually, right now, both Witch Hat Atelier Volume 4 and Promised Neverland Volume 1, which I had hoped to read during this project, are on their way to me on, from the library, so it was really close to get them for this project, but I didn't. So I think I'll be reading the dregs of my manga holes for a few months to come. There's still at least volume ones of Blame, Seraph of the End and Blood on the Tracks that are gonna turn up sometime. My camera just cut off and changed some of the lighting settings, but we are at the end anyway. So that was all the manga that I read in February, some of which I'm holding here, not even everything, because I can't hold all of them up. But please like this video if you enjoyed it, because I don't do many vlogs, and I often think that my subscribers aren't interested in manga videos, so if you like this, I'd love to get feedback that way. Also leave an emoji or a smiley face in the comments to show that you were here and that you watched till the end. But that's all from me for now, and I'll see you in my next video.